Hey, just so everybody knows, we recorded that intro 48, 80 minutes ago, and I just thought it would be funny to do a post intro to tell you that the intro you're about to hear is not true. We don't talk about any of that. I did say like five things about the port, but it's it's just a chilling episode, dude. This is slow going slow week, slow going week. Back to the roots, two dudes and like maybe fifteen to twenty people listening to them for about ten minutes. You know, we used to be in college. Now we're two super back, old teens. We're going back to college, dude. Learn about that and more on this oh, episode man. of Ricker and Bond. Damn, does time fly? It does. It's Ricker, it's Bond, probably the best episode you'll ever hear. On this episode, we got the strike at the port ending after long, egregious probabilities of nothing happening. It happened in two days, as well as Johnny yeah. Five. No, please. Oh, that was awkward. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> please, after you. Just go with it. Johnny I was caught sneaking around with his side bitch, uh, Sam Altman. We're going to get into that drama. <laughs> And the oldest of all olds, Dish and Direct TV, are combining into one completely obsolete company in 2024. It's Ricker, it's Bond. You've seen us on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're That's the story you're here for, that last one. So stick around. <laughs> wow, Bond Jen. The port strike ends as workers agree to tentative deal on wages and contract extension. What a what what a what a world. Yeah, what a world. Why don't you pull me in on that? <laughs> Maybe I should have started with the open AI one. Uh, Damn, what a hard launch. Fuck. <laughs> oh, a little millennial terms. Nice. I might no take hello, clippers. no how's your day, just straight into it. I'm okay. taking this clippers hat off. You can say how your day is as I don't hear it. I oh. get hot in here. This is actually a, a San Diego clipper hat from the 50th anniversary when they played at the Staples Center and not in Inglewood. Oh, there was one more thing. <laughs> uh, I, I basically post stuff on Instagram and then whatever does well uh, makes its way to the top of the topic list. But there's going to be a Costco being built in South LA at Baldwin Hills, if you've ever heard of it, which I haven't really, but it's like... Baldwin Hills. Renshaw. Oh, is it where that... Um, I mean, there's actually a couple places to build. I don't know. Is it where the mall is? I don't know. I don't know if Baldwin Hills is a nice place or an unnice place or a, a place for development, as some people in the real estate biz say. Uh, I think Baldwin Hills is nice. It, it does actually. Hills. It has its nice. Uh, it has like pretty big houses. Um, it's a. Uh, it's kind of like where the the richer black people live in L.A. I see. Because it's like in South L.A., but it's like. In between, like where we used to live, and like on your way to the airport, like that kind of area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But There's you know, that's a nice Costco houses. being built and apartments above it. Now that I know, it's kind of not exactly the the lowest income bracket ever. It doesn't really make a lot of funny, but I thought that was kind of interesting. I bet there's some pushback on that. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, especially from like the people that uh, live in that area. Nimby's not in my backyard, which yeah. I, can, I can attest to is uh, everyone wants to build apartments. Very, uh, a lot of apartments in a very cramped amount of space. But yes, that, that was on the top of the Ricker and Bond Instagram insights. Let me see. Where is this? What street? Coliseum Street. Where's that? Probably next to into it. I don't think it's like Inglewood area. I mean, it's. Baltimore. I mean, I could be mistaken. It is Coliseum Street. That's not the street with the fucking Coliseum, is it? I don't think yeah. so. I need to look at a map. But um, yeah, I don't know, dude. It's just east of Culver City. I love fucking uh Costco, but Costco's nice. It's also just west of Lamert. But like, oh, kind of like, ah, Limerick Park. I mean, Crenshaw's in between Baldwin and Limerick. I used to fucking walk those streets I, when I lived in my apartment after Adobe. Those were the days. Right, those were the days. I went to music shows down there, and one time it was a show for a dude that got shot and survived. And I was near a speaker, and he was like, you know. 
white people used to never be able to come down here and he looked at me <laughs> damn that's a little yeah. uh it's a little hostile but he's well, right it was like it was like things have changed and i don't know if it was like good or bad but he's like you know now it's nicer or whatever okay i know exactly where this is all right let's talk about it it's next to that <laughs> rouse uh is that the mcdonald's if i think if i'm thinking correctly right off of la brea oh <laughs> that's where it is oh man my mother used to live in that area okay um right. she'll be thrilled to hear there's gonna be a costco there there is a target nearby so targets are always kind of a nice place if you've ever seen the uh hbo hit series insecure it takes place in that area i haven't is that what with the weekend made no that was with Issa ray um i watched it and i had the thought this is good but does it deserve to be on hbo i guess we're talking about the weekend now oh geez oh geez timeless is good i like it better than heartless you like timeless bro i just can't get into timeless i don't know what it is well, gotta, I don't know what it is. I, I just don't like Playboy Cardi. Right, but just listen to it like it's not, like you don't know, because I barely know. <laughs> I've, I've, I probably listen to zero Playboy Cardi songs. Is but it me? Also produced by uh, Pharrell and some other people. Mike Dean. Mike Dean has produced pretty much everything he's made since like After Hours. At the end of the song, Abel is like, I feel like skateboard P which is a little hat tip because that was old Frail's old name in the Neptunes. And it sound, he was like, oh, it sounds like 03 Neptunes. Anyway, so I like Who said that? Abel pretty. said that? Yep, 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 yep. Uh, is it me or is he fumbling this rollout for this new album? Uh, why do you say that? I say that because, one, remember when Heartless, I mean, sorry, After Hours was coming out. All the music videos were amazing. It was like a movie, each music video. And what have we gotten with this rollout? We've gotten an Apple commercial, <laughs> and we've gotten, a in my opinion, a song video. Yeah. Well, and what was the Heartless video? Was it cooler? The Heartless was fucking, he's just running around at Las Vegas with Metro Boomin licking frogs. That is kind of cool. There is also a an old Adobe House video of uh, XO Loverboard 420 reacting to that, which happens to be me. So that uh, that rollout was beautiful, in my opinion. And then the next album, Donna Fan, he just like there was no rollout. He just released it pretty much. This I don't know, like, and I appreciate that. You know, do that either one or the other. Um, this is like he's been fucking teasing it for a year, it feels like, with fucking these stupid ass trailers and these stupid ass pictures on Instagram. Having a fucking having shows in Australia. Brazil and Australia where he's like singing the new music. And then like these fucking these fucking music videos are horrible. Like, I don't know. That's that right there. Forget, forget being used to, you used to be indie and now you do pop music. I don't care about that. This right here is the definition of selling out by accepting a check in exchange for like putting out shitty artistry. My opinion. Uh, I am disappointed that this happened from the weekend. Sure. I, I still think I liked the music either way. So I think that because I, especially from the other singles of the last albums. They were all just like kind of the like little breathers in, in the album that it's like, okay, this is kind of like uppity and poppity, but it's also like not super flowy with the rest of the album, which I'm cool with because I know that the rest of the album will probably sound not like those two singles or a little darker and cooler. I hope it sounds interesting. I think it, I like, I like dancing in the flames. I think it's like, you know, it's, you listen to it in the grocery store or fucking while you're shopping right. at Old Navy or something. Two singles and then the rest of the album's like super intricate and darky and Don FME. But even his fucking pop songs like Blinding Lights had very good music videos. Yeah. You know, like that whole thing was a story. We don't know what story's going on here yet. Well, yeah, you do. He freaking, he's like crashing out and he's going to the light. 
I bet you he had like a beautiful rap. music video planned with like a fucking storyboard and he's gonna make it <laughs> beautiful. And then Apple was like, yo, Abel, you want some money, bro? There'll be uh, there'll probably be something else, but I, I quite liked the music music tree of it, musicality of it. And uh I do kind of just wish it would just an album and not singles dropping, but that would be cool. I kind of want to listen to it. Oh, also the thumbnail for Dancing in the Flames is also the same thumbnail position wise for Heartless, except now his glasses are blacked out in the Heartless really? video. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm scrolling through YouTube <laughs> and I'm acting like the weekend Instagrams that do all this stuff. But yeah, if you look at, look up the weekend on YouTube and then look at the thumbnails. Yeah, pretty freaking artistic thumbnails right there, dude. I also, the timeless cover art is pretty cool. It's like, oh, it's the end. Damn it, Abel. I like the music. Any who's uh, the, drop the album, strikes. please. <laughs> what? Make drop the album. Yeah. Make some bitching music videos. I'm okay without music videos, but like all the like after hours music videos, I barely even watched. They were like. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I think the weekend, like besides maybe Kendrick Lamar, puts like the most like thought into true. his true. music videos. True, true, true. So, I'm also thinking that like freaking Dancing in the Flames wasn't even gonna be a music video, and then he picked something that was singular. Bro, that, that was like. Out. Isn't what if he didn't even make that song out of like <laughs> by himself? Apple's like, we need a song. Make Dancing one. in the Flames is like a track eleven type of thing out of like a track of thirteen tracks. I thought it was all right. It's like uh, even not not only that, and you know what makes this worse? Oh, I forgot to mention the <laughs> fucking guy that shot that video is the uh like he did all the photography and most of the videos for after hours like he was like the creative director of the visuals <laughs> on that so to see a real artist like that take a check and be like okay we're just gonna film this whole thing on the iphone in a black studio that is disappointing as well what's the acoustic uh video look like i'm clicking on it right now the acoustic video is just him just like it's just black all around him and he looks mysterious and he's just singing it sounds beautiful but you know, it's just like him singing. It's not like chance. YouTube is really pushing these ads upon you. YouTube is fucking crazy. Uh, it it's looks a, like a he's doing machine. a freaking XXL freestyle. <laughs> the yeah. dance flames acoustic. It also looks kind of different. I mean, we're really talking about the weekend a lot because it's kind of been a light week. But you know, this is this is classic Rick and Bond, and it's it's weekend. It's weekend era. I also went, you know, since we're talking about it, I went to a freaking, uh, I, there is you know, like a concert festival in San Diego that happens twice a year. And the first day I went outside of it and just like went in a parking lot and listened and I saw Disclosure, which was really cool. And then the second day, Gasafelstein was Or Shufflestein. Stein. I did not watch him and I don't think I would have loved it. It's Did I see like him? Schaffelstein. Um, but he played. apparently he has a really cool set. Yeah. Like the music or like the, the setup? Like the setup. Apparently he like he uses some technology that like makes like his background darker than the color black. Ah. It's weird. Yeah. yeah, he loves black stuff. He's the uh, dark prince of whatever. And he's all like chromatic or something. His, Interesting. His tables are like two crystals, but I didn't watch that. I watched some other house stuff. Where was this? Where were you? San Diego, dude. It's a cross festival. This is recently. It was this weekend. Do you just go to things now? <laughs> okay, listen. <laughs> about and you, you witness it about once a year. I go outside. I go to LA usually. Usually, there's a boiler room. I use boiler room as my excuse to to go to events. And that's usually a once a year thing. Maybe twice a year. Uh, maybe a homie comes in San Diego. I'll go to a bar or something. Uh, and that's, you know, I drink maybe four times a year. But like this, this thing year, this weekend, this year, now you just do everything. This year it was, it, it was stretched. All right. What was you, what's usually a, is like one LA weekend was like two to three months of 
going to some music events and some parties like which means like four parties but but yeah i went to a rave <laughs> Damn, I haven't been to a proper rave in a long Dude, time. Go to Cross next year. I, I, I went with my sister. My family. That's interesting. It's kind of weird. I definitely enjoy going more by myself slash with a friend so I can just like go wherever I want and don't want to like look back and make sure my family member isn't gone or like raped. Yeah. Were you, uh, were you guys like sober? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, she had two drinks and I had zero. I don't know. I can I don't know if I could do that. I can, especially with the not that I do drugs or anything. Family members listening, uh, but uh, yeah, my family member was like, "I get how people do drugs here, but sometimes you get you, you smoke a joint and you're kind of like full of anxiety or something, or you go to a flognaw fest in 2018 and you're freaking real high and then." Kanye West does blah 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 blah, and you think you're getting shot at because you could definitely get shot. At. There's always the shot. You, you always look for the emergency exit. Make sure you're around it. Oh yeah, I'm getting to the point where I don't really like concerts now. Yeah, like I think the input most times for me doesn't like equal or exceed the joy of the output. Have you been to things that are like rave slash festival things, or just like one band concert? both i haven't been to like a rave festival thing since like before covid i feel like they i mean in, in terms of input output there's you see at least a, a few acts and you could go for a freaking whole day but there's no re-entry but it's a solid four hours of like four to five acts yeah i get i mean i get tired yeah if i'm fucking i can't go sober because i'll be bored i'll be like why the fuck am i here how to dance dude if i smoke i mean that's fine but like i at some point, I don't even get high anymore. I'm just smoking a smoke. And then it's still kind of fun. If I get drunk, then I'm fucking sober in 30 minutes. So I <laughs> yeah, that's why I also didn't like drinking because then you like you, you get for sure more tired. Yeah. And then like harder drugs, like I'm fucking anxious all the time yeah, now. I'm afraid no, of that's fentanyl, a no, no. So that's a no. I'm just like, oh, what's the point? Unless it's like an artist I really fucking like, like I really fucking like, like I wanted to go see Tim's. I don't know if you know her. No. With, uh, did, uh, she was on a future. No, she was on a future song. Ah, she does. Uh, you've heard her before. Yeah, I. I, I how's her song go? Love you me, would like me. her. Me you would like her. Listen to some Thames. But I don't know. Two hundred fifty dollars for tickets at the Greek Theater. So, right. That's. I don't know if I will do that. Yeah, that's. So, that's kind of a lot. That's how much Brent Fias tickets were too. That's, and they might have been more. I think they might have been like three hundred. It's a little bit of an LA premium. I to be like, fair, I did look like on the day of the show. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> but, but I was like, dude, three hundred for Brent Fias? Who the fuck is? That is some premium pricing. That's like fucking. Like I think nosebleed? weekend tickets were. Well, he doesn't play a theater where it's nosebleed. It's like fucking. I'm pretty sure it's like all standing, and then there's a balcony. Ah. Uh. Ah, like a, like an indoor theater. Yeah, but like the weekend tickets were like four hundred, and yeah. that to me was like stadium. fair for the yeah. week. Yeah, stadium, you know. So I'm like, why the fuck is Brent Fires <laughs> paying three hundred bucks? Sounds like a freaking local little strip mall joint on a Friday. Yeah, it's like a fucking one of these theaters downtown. But yeah. I was like, nah, dude. Maybe well, also, maybe if it was like one fifty, maybe. I also enjoy like techno music, which is pretty like artist ambiguous so you can kind of just like music and like go to and, and enjoy yourself as these people play like music that any artist would play although now i'm i'm beginning to recognize techno artists by name it's pretty sick oh geez yeah it's a kid named i hate models oh god yeah yeah is he good is he next up i think he's already up <laughs> i think he's already up disclosure was models. banging I didn't see their whole thing, but Disclosure was really good, and I, I liked Disclosure when I was in like high school. Yeah, they've been around since forever. Yeah, Scheidfelstein was there, and then other people I just I didn't know. You think he gets old for them, just playing raids every night? Dude, they were. I, I was watching stuff, and they literally played at like headline San Diego, and then headline whatever Portola is in L.A. The day after, just like yeah, dude, let's just get this bag. 
it's literally that my my family members like yo like they're getting off the stage i was like what do you what do they do after i was like it's freaking hotel and then france <laughs> they're probably not even friends <laughs> <Anyone>? <laughs> Dude, they, first of all the branding is immaculate because they're just some freaking blokey ass chubby british dudes <laughs> And you think because of their the the branding of the two fa- like the the stick figure faces that they're just freaking blonde blue eyed studly jawed out dudes from Malibu and they're not. You think they just play ten shows, go on a bitch and vacation? Play right. ten shows, go on a bitch and vacation. They draw, dude. That's a draw. They're yeah. probably they'll probably draw forever, but the people that they draw are like thirty, pushing forty now. So. Bro, they will draw forever. Well, I mean, especially if you're like electronic music, you can kind of just pop up. A lot of these, a lot of the kids just pop up, like like anywhere. Festivals. Oh, festival circuit. I would think that the festival, like electronic festivals, are more production work than regular festivals. Production work. Yeah. Like lights lights and screens yeah a lot of lights a whole lot of lights uh, how, how much fucking energy do you think they just use <laughs> just 24 hours of just the grid usage no cellular data by the way which i still don't understand what where does my cellular go when i'm at a concert apparently the new apple ios update fixes that with a uh, satellite Bro, texting i Using cellular? What? Using cellular data? Or like iMessage or what? Uh, like, so if you can't reach a cell tower, it'll like send your text messages to a satellite and so you can send and receive them. What the internet, man? I just, I tweaked something about my plan and boy, I was, it was not very fluid after the transaction went down. I was getting spotty internet. When was this? This was like yesterday. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, bro. I was working this fucking festival trying to let some homies in and I couldn't even text them. <laughs> They're waiting outside. And I'm just like, wow, that satellite bullshit would be great right now. But Yeah, man. My my outings I got one more. <laughs> okay. This last one was was spur of the moment. And I have there's one more concert I'm going to next week that I got a couple months ago because i was inebriated and i like the artists in there in san diego so there's the last one before the last one that's easy you know that's baby oh, i'm listening to this audiobook about the founding of uber uh-huh. called super pump super interesting didn't know it was that tumultuous in the beginning it was basically like a big ass frat house for a long time a lot of things went unchecked a lot of guys did some bad stuff to women that was swept under the rug uh for some like, reason that makes a lot of sense with the transportation service it feels yeah very ecology but like no one cared because uber was not printing money but growing baby <laughs> day over day over day growth is good but they were they were getting funding they were getting no funding. <laughs> people were or firms were investing lots of money into for a while it was a criminal enterprise um yeah. because it was operating illegally in a lot of cities and they were putting things in the code that like for example when philadelphia started arresting drivers and trying to impound their cars um the uber engineers put a thing in the uber code where if you were a cop and you tried to call an uber like they, they would just never stop for you. Oh, or, just for like vindictive reasons or or to get the car back out? Because like um, little bratty boys. The Uber, the police officers were calling Ubers pretending to be drivers. And then when they would get picked up, they would arrest the driver because driving for Uber was illegal. All righty. And so Uber was trying to get around that by doing all this this stuff using technology. When was the founding? 2009, I think. 2010. Public in 2019. Jeez. Yeah. Um, really? Super, super that, salacious yeah. stuff. Am I using that word right? Salacious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do a definition even. I got the internet. Having or conveying undue or inappropriate interest in sexual matters. So uh, explicitly sexual. Oh, I see. 
Okay, look, so kind of salacious stuff, partly <laughs> salacious stuff. Like, uh, what else was going on? Um, like, March Uber was tracking people, like, like a shit ton, like, more than they should have, like, tracking them when they got out of their cars, like, got out of Ubers, because they wanted as much data as possible. And Apple has, like, App Store rules where, like, you can't, like, do shit like that. So what Uber did was they fucking geofenced one of their app updates. Geofence meaning, like, it basically behaves differently like in a based on a location that you draw and so they when they submitted the app to update to apple they put a geofence around apple headquarters so that apple wouldn't find that code that tracked tracked people right um but the person that approved was approving the cold code wasn't even in cupertino he was somewhere else so they found the code um apple was pissed they threatened to pull apple um, pull uber off the app store which would have ruined the company. Um, yeah, there was that. Uh, fucking just lots of shit. Fucking the things they were doing to battle taxis, taxi companies, like taxi drivers were murdering Uber drivers in South America, pulling them out of cars and like fucking just beating them on the streets. Like Kalanick and that. Camp, two founders. Uh, yes. Camp Kalanick the... did all the work. Camp kind of just like, chilled camp was the ceo of stumble upon did you ever use stumble upon no but i remember stumble upon stumble upon was nice yeah and i don't know if you remember uber was before uber x it was like a uber cab yeah it was like a fucking luxury cab service and then like it didn't blow up until people started being able to use their own cars to be drivers in 2010, the company received its first major funding, a 1.3 million round, not a lot, led by first round capital. An 11, yeah, 11 I wonder million. what that's worth now. <laughs> Series A by Benchmark. Uber went on to expand. December 2011, Kalanick announced that Uber had raised $37 million in a Series B financing from Menlo, Bezos, and Goldman Sachs. They were burning so much cash because they had to do whatever they could to get drivers. So they were fucking paying drivers to drive. They were buying them iPhones, giving them out for free. They were fucking paying to like get laws passed. They were they it's they were burning cash. It was crazy. Global loss of three point eight billion in twenty sixteen. Also in twenty sixteen Another raise, three point five billion, from Saudi Arabia's sovereign wealth fund. Did you know? Ah, uh, yeah, that was in the that was in the audio book too. One of the guys from that fund sits on Uber's board, or did? I don't know if he still does. Classic Saudi. Um, I love it. They were trying to go into self driving cars. Mm -hmm. Briefly, they hired a guy from Google, who was developing Waymo early on. And I don't know if you remember this, he took some classified Google documentation to his self-driving car startup called Auto, which was acquired by Uber. Google found out, sued him. I think he might be in jail. Um, it, was, it, was, it was a whole thing. And um, the new CEO uh, axed the self-driving car like position or like anything having to do with self-driving cars. So we'll see if that hurts them in the future. 2017, a female former Uber engineer did a 3,000 word blog post that alleged that Uber's corporate culture it was highly hostile, sexist, and offensive. Uh, sick segue, I watched the Ellen DeGeneres comedy special. Mm -hmm. I liked it a lot. It was very 90s comedian, uh, but it was it was funny. I giggled. I laughed. What did she do again? I guffawed. Uh, people said she was mean. Oh. <laughs> oh, she was mean. <laughs> she wasn't. Was she wasn't having freak offs, was she? <laughs> I don't think any of the freak offs, dude. There was a freaking a Diddy in French Montana uh, clip that was on on her show, <laughs> and it was French Montana being very like I don't see him often, but he was being kind of like shyish and like looking down and stuff and he, <laughs> you know this is obviously the 
the the angle that the clip was kind of portraying but he was saying how he met diddy for the first time he's like yeah he flew me out uh bring all your friends you know fly you out to new york and then he laughs and then ellen's like okay <laughs> like she knew she knew what a <laughs> she definitely knows bro what a rich what a rich gay celebrity would do to a, another celebrity perhaps allegedly. did you see that video with um diddy and mike tyson no oh god you, you, you'll love this video they're like sitting on the couch together being interviewed and it appears as if diddy's hand is like touching uh, mike tyson's thigh and mike tyson picks up his hand and like moves it <laughs> and then fucking straightens up and like adjusts his coat like he's about to the fucking like oh mr tyson on him. mr tyson does not love the homosexual <laughs> I could only imagine. <laughs> I'll send you that. That was a good clip. And fucking Diddy's just like looking dumbfounded. <laughs> I can like, only imagine that. Just, uh, I'm pretty sure, I won't say anything, but uh, a, a rough and tumble man from New York with a lisp from the, the 1960s or whatever, 70s, doesn't, uh, doesn't swing that way. Yeah. Like for a man, you could tell Diddy's hungry for power because if he could, <laughs> if he could make Mike Tyson submit, like this. <laughs> you know that, very inspirational clip of him uh talking on the of diddy on the phone on mtv and he he just got a deal and he like hangs it up and he's like ah i can do anything i don't think i saw i've sampled it and i've sampled it in a very inspirational beat and uh yes i can i can i can i can jaw feel the uh the power hunger that boy diddy does love his power (laughs) for the keen the keen listeners, you might always notice something happen around 30 minutes where it seems like some for some reason the flow of the conversation was halted and then someone comes back and tries to bring up what they were talking about 10 minutes ago. It's just you. <laughs> it's just you. You're hot. <laughs> You're the crazy one. You're Not us. High. Stop going to raves. You don't need to take drugs to enjoy literally the fastest pace tempo and a bunch of I, I didn't really look at there was some attractive female there's a there was a chick with a sick jacket that was like part charters jersey and her husband was a lot less attractive than she was don't you just hate when that happens it's like what a waste i was like because there was also another dude beside them and this dude was taller and more attractive than her husband and I was like, and I got them confused. I was like, I bet those two are together. And then taller guy goes away. And here's the guy with a large chested woman in a, a sick Charter's jean jacket. Damn. Very you asked if you could join the relationship. <laughs> I, I, I have <laughs> almost no doubt. I have a, there's a 59% chance that this man s- stands in the corners of hotel rooms. <laughs> With the, wow, fucking with the chair that's always there. While Terrell swings through. Terrell, Jim, either way. Terrell. Both are black. <laughs> D- D'Angelo. Mark those are, those are Those are three Mexican men. <laughs> oh, man. You know what I'm fucking craving right now? I'm fucking <laughs> craving one of those fucking just greasy ass burger joints that you find you find like in south la like a fucking jim's burgers right. or a tams like a like rock or whatever that is yeah like something that'll just fucking give you fucking diabetes i don't oh, want smash smash all the meat out of my patty fuck where can i get one of those Big fish one. guy eat fish Rick and i Bob actually Rick and Bob. I, I like fish <laughs> i enjoy it Big really oyster good. guy Never had an oyster in my life. Let's go to freaking let's oyster it up. Let's go to Spain, dude. Go to Cornell. I'm down. Want to go to let's a rave in a uh, very very techno rave in Manchester? Manchester, UK. Sure. Sixteen hour flight <laughs> for a rave. Yeah. Sweaty warehouse. Are Where you going? Uh, there was a. There was a. It happens in like August next year, so I flirted with the idea. That sounds fun. Sounds like something. Sounds like uh, sounds like you're a free bird. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's no wife, no kids. <laughs> That's true. 
just going to concerts and just going to concerts, walking. No fucking. But what is also no free, birdage. free birdage is uh, just staying inside and going for a walk, not having to go to a like a dinner, you know. Yeah, fuck a dinner. <laughs> Raves and sitting inside are are the birds of a same feather or whatever Billy Eilish said. Maybe I should go to a rave. I don't know. Come freaking next fall. They also have one in spring, but I'm not feeling the spring rave, you know? Yeah. I I just feel like it's not as much fun as just like getting a drink and talking to someone. It's true. It is it's a little bit more fun than that. But it might very be. different. You like, gotta you gotta just I mean you gotta be into like house music for a a second or two yeah I, I i gotta enjoy the music also knowing a headliner as a as a normie would work disclosure was sick gescheiferstein was whatever gescheiferstein get into techno dude oof dude just bobbing your head four on the floor nothing like it oh shit i didn't like it until 2023 when I went to a boiler room. It's happened to me multiple times at concerts. Where I went to a concert one time in, in San Diego and it was like slightly stupid or whatever. And there was a punk band that was very famous called No Effects that opened for them. And kind of everybody was like, they were like older, like freaking 80s punk band, 90s punk band. Nobody was really like jive into it. And then Slightly Stupid came on. And they're like, do you guys know who the f that was dude that was freaking no effects it was sick and then I liked, I liked them after and then in 2023 when i went on my la excursion there was a very heavy techno set at at the avalon which you accompanied me to ah yes the avalon <laughs> the avalon where all the straight men go I had a lot of fun at the avalon have you is that yeah not, i mean i guess a lot of gays just go there but i thought it was kind of a gay Club. really no it's just a venue that has different events but that's not technically west hollywood i know you didn't say that but that's for all the gay <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's just hollywood hollywood eh? and in the west hollywood every club is a gay club ah uh, well you know the gays like to sprawl they do um yeah i went and saw that and then kind of got into that and now i like techno more also, very good for workouts. Good freaking hard style techno set. Freaking yeah. 160 BPM. Nice. So you're a gym boy now. I do. I will have to go. I didn't go yesterday. Um, Damn. I was always a dumbbell. I was dumbbelling in my in my abode. But boy, those machines. Bro. They got heavy weights. They got heavy weights and you can pull down on them. That's right. You can pull down. Like, people love to tell me when I say go to the gym, they're like, oh, I do body weight exercises. <laughs> yada, body, yada, yada. Body weights can get you hella toned for real. They can get you nice toned. You do a lot of push ups. Callous, maybe calisthenics is different, but. Yes, you're absolutely right. But here's the thing I would never tell somebody to go to the gym if they're already in shape. So them just doing body weight push ups tells me they're out of shape or body weight exercises. And honestly, I. I do only tell like people that are out of shape to go to the gym. Right, right. Sorry, I'm an asshole. I don't know. Only if they ask me, why am I so fucking depressed? And no, that's good. <laughs> why am I so depressed and I fucking feel like shit all the time? Those people also go to the gym. Freaking yearly, daily push ups, dude. Or my favorite is why can't I get um, girls to notice me? I just say go to the gym. You don't get hella whores because you're not freaking ripped, bro. And you're also 5'9. Well, I always say, if a girl is going to deny you, don't let it be because you're out of shape. It can be anything else, but don't let it be short. that. Because you're short, short, small, and white. Bald. 23, <laughs> going bald. 23 and bald is rough. <laughs> oh, God. That's dude. real rough. Fucking five foot three. Five foot three is a digit. <laughs> that's, y yikes. I, that's... Five, six... Five six five nine. Is yeah, imagine you have a son and he's just short as <laughs> fuck. Like something like he's like four six or something. Like what do you do? I mean, that's Midge is kind of whatever. Just an average. I mean, no. an average short guy. 
Going through concerts as a tall real helps. You get to a certain place, though. I was trying to get up towards the the frontish. Now, after a certain amount, you're kind of like, all right, I'm kind of blocking just, people's sight. <laughs> I'm just sucking up all the oxygen over here. No, it's 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 good up there. Then you start to get down. And you're just, not a lot of arm room. It's kind of chicken winging it. Yeah, gross. Close yeah, to people. It is very close to people. Didn't really see like couldn't really see all the attractive whores. Mm. I say that with respect. I love a good whore. I mean, they're nice. I know nothing. Fine. Of and nothing of whores for any family members listening. But my well. boy couldn't keep the ladies <laughs> off him at the boiler room. <laughs> at boiler room, uh, dude, I missed the dude like I loved that was playing there because I was eating a, a bison burger. Because at the boiler Where? room, play in, in the boiler room. They, they, they have, have food there? Yeah, they have food trucks that are $20. For a bison burger? Was it honestly, do you know what bison burger is? Or just, you know, of the bison animal? I know the, the animal. Was it oh, I the, didn't know if it was a, the, a chain or not. But there was three stages at this, at this across Union Station concert. And at the one before that year, it was at one place of this park. And so when this last set of the park was letting out, everybody was fleeing this area. I was like, oh, dude, I'm going to be front and center for my, my boy Bonobo. Bonobo's a DJ. Chill DJ. And I get a burger and I go back. and I'm like, all right, he's not freaking here yet. He's coming, I suppose. And then I go down and there's just a mob of people and like 20 minutes into this guy's set that I really wanted to see. But I also saw him. In San Diego. How show. long were the sets that you missed an entire set on <laughs> I, I, I missed half of it. <laughs> probably Damn. I missed like 20, 30 minutes of it, and he probably oh. played 40, 50. Was the bison burger good? It was good, very good. I also got free fries. Nice. Nice, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Support your local LA food trucks. Bison burger. They're, They're struggling very... out here. Are they? I mean, I don't I, know. I doubt the festival trucks are like a food truck on freaking lafayette street i did a um website for a food truck and he was just basically telling me like about the business they have to pay a lot of money to go to those festivals oh i suppose like like between five to ten thousand dollars sometimes zoinks <sighs> yeah i guess 20 maybe 25 a pop how much? 5,000 divided by 25. Everybody knows that's 200, 200 people. Seems seems doable. Plus, you got to pay your staff and fucking, you got to pay for the food. Okay, 15,000. Gas, fucking, if you're... 600 people. Hopefully, hopefully they get that many customers. Maybe. Go to the, go to the, uh, come down to San Diego. There's a bunch of just lost 25 year old girls and boys that are dressing up like silly billies and flaunting through downtown to go to a, a bayside park and listen to some music probably take some drugs but it's more about the music what about the music not about the drugs <laughs> not about the drugs or using that as an excuse to take drugs san diego san easy dude home of San Diego Padres in the playoffs. This goes into our sports corner. Also, the San Diego Clippers, which is the minor league G League team, Gatorade League. Have they played in that stadium yet? They're playing in Oceanside. Um, but they haven't been in the into it yet to play a game, a home game. Uh, Clippers. No, I think it should be this season, eh? Yeah, because they're having concerts there. Oh. Clippy, um, let's go uh, boats, I, baby. <laughs> I've been playing some 2K, and they're playing in an Intuit, though. And I'm like, oh, I haven't even played here yet. 2K, I'm telling anybody who isn't into sports or likes sports but wants to follow it more, video games and, and repping. But more so, the video games learns you the sport, learns you the players, you get attached, and you can you, you start to rep. That's how I got into basketball. That's why I like the Warriors. Really? I thought you liked the Warriors because they were good. No, they were bad at the time. 
Yeah. Family member was in the Bay. Uh, I'm not obviously not going to support the Lakers because freaking gross. Yeah, I'm you obviously not going to support the Clippers because. Well, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. <laughs> Or the the grossest team in the history of of all of basketball at the time. Even if I did know their San Diego lineage, maybe there would have been something there. But you know, they hey. they weren't the boats as the boats are now, dude. Now they're just legit the boats, baby. Let's go boats. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Clippers are literally out. a boat. So, anyways, I went to uh, the closest team. Went to two K. Monte Ellis at the time was uh, on the team. Stephen Curry probably wasn't even on the team yet, or he was a rookie. I didn't know anything about basketball, and I was like, uh, Monte Ellis could dunk really well, and then they traded Monte Ellis, and Monte Ellis was like the only basketball people I knew. And I was like, oh, no, Monte. <laughs> they traded Monte? And then Warriors happened, and you know they did their thing, and now they kind of suck. Yeah. My boy, my boy left, bro. It's kind of like unfair how you can just like use LeBron and just dunk <laughs> every time like no one can stop. Yeah, him. dude, you don't you don't use the good teams. Who's your team? Who's your two K team? This is such a light business episode. Who's your two K team? The fucking Clippers, bro, and they oh, suck. The Let's go boats, dude. They can't make you feel shit. Harden bro. left, bro. I don't even know who's on this team anymore. My boys. Not according to two K. I just played as him last night. Well, you got you got to buy the new two K. It's the new one. Oh, is he actually still on there? Anyways, the boats, dude. They rebranded. Your boy Bomber might have ran Microsoft stock into the ground for a decade, but he's bringing the boats back, dude. Yeah. Have you bought merch yet? Have I bought merch? No, I haven't. You got to buy one boat hat. I got to buy a jersey, bro. My arms are looking good. I want to <laughs> rep it shirtless. Dude, I want people to know. Basketball jerseys. Mid key suck. Hey, they suck if you are a skinny noodle armed person. I get it, dude. I love flaunting my physical gym arms in a large, apparently, I usually always buy like extra large. First of all, 2X nowadays is like an XL. Not because I'm huge, but because these, I don't know what buffoons, what fools are making these garments smaller. But I got to buy a 2X to fit like an L. First of all, your shirts, all your clothes are way too big, especially your shoes. My shoes have about three to four sizes too big, but I'm pretty sure that's good for running. What do you No, It's bad for running. What that's what also do? someone told to me recently. <laughs> it's horrible for it's horrible for your ankles. They're going to slip off. What if you're like in an emergency off. and you need to run away? I run, fucking... run. It's not like I'm flopping around in them. <laughs> And I've I've, yeah. I've I've done that for a long time, Loki. I remember back in when I was I was flaunting across the uh, the globe actually as a high schooler. Yeah, I was going out of country. You know, I was going to a different country, different language, dude. I'm cultured. You should, you should get one pair of shoes that fit you correctly and just like compare. I'll buy. I will compare. I'll buy a a, a size 13. I believe is true to size. I'll see if that's too tight. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not 12, dude. Yeah, no, 12 is like a little small, but maybe yeah, a 13. Um, anyways, I was buying a soccer jersey, and maybe because oh, the, the Latinos, maybe, maybe they're, they're, they like soccer. What did I say that? They enjoy it. Uh, so maybe that's why they run small on the soccer, but a 2X LAFC jersey, <laughs> rest in peace, my loyalty is rip, is changing from. The Los Angeles Football Club to the San Diego Football Club as of next MLS season. You can you can oh, hop wow. on. Do you want to hop on this the soccer train? You can I don't know. play a FIFA, dude. I did I did just uh, uh, unsubscribe from Microsoft Cloud, uh, which was probably not their fault, but the Wi-Fi the connectivity was real slow and it was unplayable. But whatever. I guess I gotta buy a FIFA so I could learn the players. Apparently, the new FIFA is a hundred dollars. Why? I don't know. That's kind of what video games run now. The fuck? You console, though? Huh? You have a console? Yeah, a PS5. You have to pay for online now? You have to pay for online, correct, yes. Yeah. It's like $10 a month or something. It might be 15 For a few decades. But it's like, what the fuck? Like, I'm not going to fucking play by myself. Yeah. 
Yeah, they, they, uh, <laughs> once the gaming industry really, you're like, hey, what if we just made them pay to do this thing that we used to do for free? It used to be Xbox. You needed only was the, the pay for online. I am surprised they don't have commercials in <laughs> between the 2K games. <laughs> oh, During boy. Time out. I, actually, I, I was, um, uh, so I, I was paying for this. I was using Samsung TV and you could pay Xbox Cloud. There's a bunch of different um, services, gaming services you could use. And it was like NVIDIA's Game Cloud or something. And there was a wait time and ads next to it to play online. And that was pretty lame. Also not good games. Anyways, NBA jerseys suck, dude. Except for like some of the old clip like sun stuff what am i gonna do with a a, a hat with a basketball what is it got, the sun gonna be too bright Dude, in the hats stadium i love hats hats, are, my hats are hats are great if they're appropriate you see this people see this and they think probably golf <laughs> oh. that's also where I, why i wear my own hat Dude, i have a sick it's a chargers branded but with uh my words on it that's an old ass hat did i give you that hat no, dude, this first of all isn't old. It was it came like this, which is also lame. The bill is way too big. It's orange underneath. Um it was they were doing like a San Diego throwback night at the Staples one year. Oh yeah. Was I there or did you go by it yourself? It was Miles. That was with oh. me. San Diego Miles. the old San Diego Clippers logo, which was representing the uh the the flag the sails of the Clipper boats, which the San Diego Clippers were named after. Let's go boats. You don't say. Anyways, uh, let's look through these Clippers hats on Rick and Bond, dude. Clean hats. And you can forty five dollars for a. <laughs> we we're in the future now, and these are what uh, things cost. If you get to buy, almost all the time, dude. Every once in a while, I get I get with the homie. Uh, no, Diddy. Um, <laughs> And they're like, oh, dude, this this burrito is expensive now, like $16 for a burrito. I'm like, yeah, that's like what things cost now. Where were you? San Diego. It's kind of a lot for a burrito. It is a little bit, but like, you know, San Diego's next to the water. Damn. Los Angeles Clippers. Go? Let's go boats. You could get a camo hat. I would get... Probably this one specifically because it shows the boats. And speaking of boats, the, <laughs> the Port Union did their strike. They're all okay with it now. U.S. dock workers in the United States Mar Maritime Alliance have reached a tentative deal on wages and extended their contact through January 2025, which is not very long. Long time for further negotiations. There was a week-long strike, Bonjen. And it impacted 14 East Coast and Gulf Coast ports, disrupted the U.S. supply chain with billions of dollars in goods stuck offshore and shipping costs rising. Uh, the the union, which is kind of funny, most of the, well, the sentiment I saw online was like, dude, screw this union guy. Unions are apparently freaking out of, out of favor now. Everybody loved unions back in the day. These hats are pretty cool. Fuck. <laughs> I know, dude. God damn it! You gotta you you wear a jersey. You know, sometimes you're going to a function. It's whatever. It's like wearing a nice suit. But if the hats are this cool, the jersey's got to be cooler. Check the jersey, bro. Check oh, they have a leash, dude. I can get one for my cat. A leash? <laughs> that was no a fucking uh, not a leash, a collar. collar. <laughs> that was. <laughs> Uh, oh, that so cute. Saying, she could be a Clippers cat. <laughs> Look at their jerseys, bro. Look at their jerseys. Go to the hamburger menu, click jersey, and see if that's what you want to rock. When did they make a fucking condor there? That was Last like guy. some LA staples trying to do something cool thing. <laughs> what does that have to do with boats? Yeah, they should have made that, that was an probably anthropomorphic boat. That <laughs> That was probably some bomber stuff, to be honest. I hate it. Um, yeah, literally 2016. Bomber was like, "Oh, we got to do something." Loser. That's a pretty cool bomber jacket. Stick to like 
Bomber jacket? Yeah, I know, dude. Where are the jerseys? Seems like they got everything here except for jerseys. Where Click the, jerseys? the hamburger man. Hamburger man, yeah. Yeah, where are you? ClippersHQ.com. I'm on. Almost, yeah. Almost uh, like an ugly jersey. Jersey. Almost. Okay, we got the blue jersey. We got the <laughs> white jersey. Ooh, the black jersey. It's okay. It looks pretty clean. I do like that little, the seam, the, oh, is that a little throwback? Okay, that's pretty cool. The old colors of the San Diego was like light blue. And the seam is light blue. I see what you're doing, Bob. <laughs> Bro, these are $225. <laughs> that's just the price of things. No, that's ridiculous. Two. That's crazy. For a jersey? That's what they run, dude, too. For an authentic, whatever that means. They must be nice as fuck. Okay, well, <laughs> sometimes you get a soccer jersey or something, and uh, the logos and stuff are of a of a material that is, is not great that you don't want on you. But Like, what's the difference between the $200 jerseys and the $100? Material... And maybe the like logo material might look a little worser. Um, yeah, the cheapest are one forty. Now let's go on over to Amazon and look up <laughs> Clippers jerseys. Uh, uh, I, I do remember one time I bought a Warriors jersey that was not like whatever they call it, the premium one, and it was definitely not good. It was basically like like a crappy running shirt. These jerseys look a lot worse, <laughs> but they're 50 bucks. Clippers, dude. Clippers playing at the Intuit Dome. Everybody likes it and everybody wants it. I wish I had some friends that were Clipper fans out here. Yeah. So I could go enjoy a game with them. I mean, maybe it's miles ago. It's more fun to go by yourself. You don't have to worry about people dying. Dying? What the? Yeah. Is that what you? Is that what you worry about when you go out <laughs> with your friends? Maybe just a family member, but I they could probably die whether you're with your friends or not. So might yeah. as well just enjoy the night. It's on mine. It's on my dime. I pay for their death. Oh, really? No. You collecting that down. sweet, sweet Ooh, wood, dude? How much are tickets? Um, probably premium now. Fuck yeah, they gotta pay. They gotta pay those fucking contractors. Right next to so far two <laughs> and a theater. <laughs> oh, we're still in preseason. The regular season starts the twenty third against the Suns at the Dome. Let's get some tickets. Do it. Let's see how much they are, Earn, dude. And a crypto based Bitcoin ATM right across from the into a dome. Yeah, apparently they use facial recognition to like pay for stuff there. Ooh, that's that's crazy. Against my rights, straight to fucking Bob. Microsoft, SoFi, and right next to this, these, this, uh, what you call theater dome uh, arena block. You got Walgreens. You got Subway. <laughs> this is the best episode yet. You got like one hundred fifty bucks. That's not bad. But are you going to stand in the wall, dude? The Clipper fan wall? No, no sitting. Like soccer. Nothing like 82, 82 games of standing. For yeah, the NBA is on Amazon Prime this year, right? I'm not sure. Let's I see what's so. going on. Um, oh, well, yeah. When are they... Freaking, they tried to get my boys off of there. And everybody loves a, a show that was on Inside the NBA. And it, probably the best. The, I really rarely watch like sporting media unless it's like playoff stuff. But especially like talking heads talking about sports, I'm a no go on. But inside the NBA, you had Shaq, you had my boy Ernie, you had my boy the Jet, Kenny Smith, and Charles Barkley, and they were a hoot and a riot. Did you know you could watch these games in VR? No. On the MetaQuest. No, oh, maybe I've seen kind of clips. Yeah, apparently and, they started last year. Have you seen that new thing that's popping up on you? It's a new thing popping up. These these uh, retail stores, and they they show you a wall of your sporting event of choice, and you go to like a like a wing joint, and but it's like an immersive sporting experience. 
Uh, no. Yeah. I haven't. Isn't that, uh, yeah. I wish I could know keywords to Google, but uh, yeah, you basically go to like a like a what's the the wing spot? Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, but instead of uh, like a bunch of TVs, it's a giant wall, of, and it's like you're sitting on the sideline. Do you have to wear glasses or? No, I think it's just a big old wall. Interesting. And I would, I would love to partake in some adult beverages at a at a place and see some. Uh, probably not a boats game, but maybe a boats playoff game. I'm really interested to see how this looks in VR. Do you have a headset? No. Well, I don't. But I mean, they're cheap as fuck now, so maybe I'll grab one. The NBA signed a new 11-year media agreement with the Walt Disney Company that provides you such media outlets as ESPN, NBC, Universal, and Amazon Prime Video through 2035 through 36 season. Disney. On Meta? Uh, I don't see anything about Meta. Just the media agreements of NBA and these three companies. Oh. I see. Disney, Home in the Finals, Christmas Day, etc., etc., etc. NBC, you to telecast opening night. Prime video to stream the NBA Cup, which is now a thing. Playing tournament Thursday and Friday nights. And a strategic partner in third party global destination of NBA League Pass. Damn. Yeah. That's, that's what's up. Uh, this. Oh, there's, they, have, they have a schedule for VR. Uh, 2023-2024 NBA VR schedule. Games will be available in NBA Arena and Meta's Horizons World app and in the x Stadium app, which everybody knows what that is. We're talking October 25, October 28. We're just all the things. But what about the boats? There's literally not one boat. Oh, there. Uh, they they yeah. don't have boats games? No boats no, there's games? boats games. I had to type in LA instead of Los Angeles. Who is the company that um, sets up the VR cameras at the games? Probably like a third party meta thing. Maybe. Let's not Google it and chat GPT it. Chat GPT, can I do voice and desktop? No, pretty lame. I saw they popped up like a QR square to try to do it advertisement for the advanced voice i was like geez you guys are in like startup founder mode if you will really didn't they just raise like six billion but like the mindset you know the grind set dude <laughs> grind set the grind set of constantly doing updates like your facebook in your 29th year as a company who does vr cameras for nba to stream to meta ChatGPT says, as they browse RoadToVR.com, I almost bought a VR site from somebody. I still might see if his price went. A VR site? It was kind of just like targeted towards old, old people doing VR stuff. The NBA streams its games in VR through a partnership with Meta. Utilizing the MetaQuest headset, fans can do stuff. On apps like X-Stadium and Meta Horizon, X-Stadium, developed by Yerba Buena VR, provides an immersive experience with 180-degree viewing options for select games. And that makes you think, will the Clippers be good this season? Is James Harden still on the Clippers? Who knows? Pretty sure. Or did fucking Balmer blow his wealth? Well, not really. He's like the third richest person in the world. But... I'm sure this was nothing for him. I can't wait to own the San Diego FC team. I can't wait to buy the still... Clippers from Steve. I don't get off the Clippers unless it's a good price, Steve. <laughs> Steve, how much are we talking? It can't be, can't be super high because I mean, oh, it, I mean, it's probably higher now. So it's right, let's, Steve, yeah. stuff. let's see the last NBA team sold it was the Phoenix Suns. For only four bill in 2023, not bad, not bad. Four was it like it was like a like a firm that bought it? 
Well, the Phoenix Suns were the last NBA franchise to be sold with billionaire. Ah, we got a lot of ads as I try to do a podcast. Nice. <laughs> Good shit, dude. Uh, businessman Matt Ishiba, Ishbia, purchasing it, purchasing it for a record setting four billion, which is kind of what happens as you go more time in the future. It goes up and up and up. Matt Ashibia is the CEO and chairman of Mortgage Lender, United Wholesale Mortgage. He's in the more I'm in the mortgage business. He's also the majority owner of the NBA, WNBA, Phoenix Mercury, alongside his older brother Justin, who is also a billionaire and a founding partner of Shore Capital. And we'll go into the Shore Capital next episode on Rick Graham Bond. Like I said in the intro. My goodness, probably the best episode yet. Uh, and you enjoyed it. I hope you did, and I hope you take this knowledge far. <laughs> Everyone. Enjoy the day. Bye. <laughs> Love you. <laughs>